from the blockchain API, blockchainapi.com. Uh, we just make doing stuff with Solana easier. Okay. Um, and also do an NFT analytics, so check it out. Um, yeah, so just really quick, I'm just going to go over what are program-derived addresses. Um, let's look at it like this. Let's say you're um, just at a high level, right? You want to interact with smart contracts. You want to be able to um, sometimes send them stuff uh, to handle, right? And that can include SOL, like the currency, or it can include an NFT or any other token or whatever. Um, and in other words, you're trusting this co contract because hopefully it's open source, although very few contracts on Solana actually are. Um, but you're trusting this contract um, with uh, whatever you're sending it. And when you're doing that, you generally want to be sure that it's not like you're sending it to someone else's account. Um, you know, so, so in other words, you want to be sure that you want to be sure who has control over your stuff once you send it to the program, right? So a program derived address. And, and, and the other thing is that a lot of this loses its meaning when the stuff is closed source, right? So it, it might as well not matter, but somewhat. I mean, but anyways, I mean, it is harder to hack. So security perspective, yeah, but it's not like you can verify it. But anyways, uh, program derived address. Um, basically what this is, is it's a program, it's a uh, account that is uh, made in such a way that it is only, so you, you can derive it in, in such a way such that it, it can only be accessed um, by the program that you're sending the stuff to. So let's say I want to, let's say I'm bidding, right, on an NFT on a marketplace, right? And so let's say I bid one soul. I need to store that soul so that if my bid's accepted, it's automatically sent, right? So when I store that soul, I'm sending it to an account that's very likely a program-derived address. And so in other words, that account and myself are the only two entities that have control over or should have control over um, that account. There's actually one other entity that might, and that could be the admin of the program, and they might give themselves special authority because let's say you're you know, listing an NFT and it's a bad NFT, I don't know, it has something bad in it, right? And they wanna cancel that listing so that it's not publicly shown. Uh, that's the other reason why it might wanna access that account to remove it, right? So anyways, um, so anyways, yeah, so the, the program derived address is this account and now I'm bidding on it for one soul. I put it in this account and then because I have authority over it, if I'm going to cancel my bid, I can remove the soul from the account. And then if they, um, and then basically if uh, if the bid's accepted, then the program can automatically remove that soul from the account and put it in the NFT. And um, you can actually verify in the Explorer that the account, like on the Solana Explorer, just from looking at the transactions, that when you do send your NFT or soul or whatever, that it is a program-derived account, because it will say, this is an account, and then it will also say, assigned program ID, you know, this thing. It still sort of loses its meaning um, because, um, and so it's, it's super useful, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna discount it, but it, it would be much more meaningful too if you could also verify that the source code is, that, you know, verify through the source code that, okay, this is what the program does, right? Because the program, even though it's a program-derived address, the program can still do something nefarious with it, right? So you also wanna be able to verify what the program does with it. So it's not like somebody else can do it. And so the question then becomes, well, why can't somebody else do something with it? Why am I and the program the only one that have authority over it? Well, that's just because of the way that the program's constructed. So really, really um, so actually, let me, let me back up. Actually, from my understanding, it's not necessarily that I have control over it, it's that the only thing that has control over it is the program, and the program gives me control over it. Okay, so sorry for, for confusing that. Um, so really the only thing that has control over it should be the program, right? Um, and the and how do you ensure that that's the case? Well, the address is derived in such a way that there's not a seed phrase that corresponds to it. So even if you somehow, you know, had more time than actually will ever exist, you iterated through all of the possible seed phrases, um, none of those seed phrases would actually correspond to the program derived address, right? So it no matter what, it specifically belongs to that program. There is no seed phrase that corresponds to that public key, okay? 
So that's really the purpose. Um, and it's listed in these docs here. Let me see, program derived addresses. Oh, whoops, I'm on the wrong. Oh no, I'm on the right page. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's really the point. It's because it gives a program authority over that account. And those are sort of the reasons. It's like you're bidding on an NFT, you're transferring an NFT, you want to put something, um, you know, in some sort of escrow account usually. Um, and there, there's probably many other use cases that there'll be in the future. Um, but really this becomes very much more, this becomes much more powerful when the code is actually open source. Um, that's really the key here because you basically can first say, okay, it's only under the control of the program. And then you can say, this is what the program does, right? So you know what will happen to it. Um, whereas if you can only verify it's under the control of the program, but you don't know what the con program does, then, I mean, honestly, it's not that much different than a Web2 philosophy where you can pretty much verify generally what you're doing on a website, for the most part, is going to be only under control of the website or the, the company. Web, the company. Um, but you uh, you don't really know exactly what they're doing so um, you know yeah so it'd be it would be nicer if more smart contracts open source their stuff like Metaplex is doing they're doing a great job with Candy Machine and uh, the token metadata program you know they're, they're they're doing a great job I recommend checking them out and also checking us out blockchainapi.com all right uh, thank you so much have a great day